Hello, I'm Tim Miller Morgan. I'm an extension veterinarian for aquatic species with Oregon Sea Grant Extension. And what I'm going to talk about right now is how we go about catching up a fish to examine it and then sedate it. And then I will show you the stages of anesthesia that a fish goes through to get to the point where we can do an exam on it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll recover the fish as well. Uh, before we do that, I think we may also demonstrate how we do a skin scrape and a gill biopsy. So what we're going to do is catch up these fish here. These are rockfish. There's black rockfish and the rest are, um, there is a black rockfish in the corner. And then the rest here are, these are all copper rockfish. And then this is a quillback rockfish right here. <clears throat> and I'm just going to pick one of them and catch it up. Now again, uh, what you need to remember is when we're catching the fish, you want to wear gloves especially when we're going to put our hands on the fish. We need to make sure we're wearing gloves. And when you're wearing gloves, some of the gloves have come with powder on them. And what you want to do is if you're wearing gloves that are powdered, you want to be able to wash all that powder off ahead of time before you handle the fish. Especially when I show you later, we're going to take gill biopsies and you don't want any of that powder to get into the gills or into the biopsy because it will uh, confound your interpretation of, of what you're seeing. Okay. So now we're going to catch the fish up. Now again, a reminder, when we're catching fish, the net is a herding device. It is not something for actually catching the fish and holding it. And then what we're going to do is herd the fish that we want to look at into this tote. So I'm going to put the tote in the water. And then I'm going to go down here and try to and catch up a fish. I'm going to catch this quill back right here and see how I'm moving slowly and deliberately to get the fish right into the tote. Now sometimes some of the fish with spines will catch their spines on the net a little bit so we want to be very gentle when we take it off so that we don't hurt them. And there we go. He's right there in the tote. What we can do is we can drain a little bit of water off of the tote. And then we can take a look at the fish while it's right there. And what we would do first before we do any more handling of the fish is we'd look at it and do we notice anything right away that stands out? You know, the, is the fish breathing hard? Are there, and the fish is going to be breathing a little harder, harder than normal because we've just caught it up. But is there anything that stands out? Are there any lumps and bumps? Do you notice on the fish, do you notice any tears in the fins or anything like that? Now sometimes you can, once you've noticed all that <clears throat> and made notes of that, you can sometimes do a quick exam, visual exam of the fish by handling it without sedating it. And we'll try to go ahead and do that now. Before I do that, I want to point out, notice this fish has spines on its dorsum. It also has spines on its operculum or the gill covers. Now what you'll notice is I go to reach for them, the spines will come up. So with this kind of fish, you need to be aware of that and be careful. If we were dealing with a koi or something like that, it wouldn't be as big a deal. But when you're handling the fish, just like many other animals, if you cover their eyes a lot of times, they will calm down. So in this case, with this fish, what I'm gonna do is come in, put my hand gently over the fish's eyes, and then I can bring it up just slightly and I can get a look at it. I'm not going to do anything real that'll really startle it or it's painful at this point, but I can get a look at the fish. If I had somebody helping me, they could reach over my shoulder and do a skin scrape right here, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. And the other thing is I can, you notice as long as I keep my hands over the eyes, it's relatively calm. And I'm also moving very slowly and deliberately. I can get a look at the ventrum. I can even if I slide up a little bit, I can get a quick look at the gills and take a look at the gill cover color. And the gill color can tell me a little bit about the fish's health. The fish that are anemic are going to have very pale gills. And this fish has bright sort of cherry red gills, which tells me that it's, it's pretty healthy. It's got a good blood supply to the gills. And it's not anemic. And I can even flip them over and get a look here. You notice we have a little tiny ulcer right here, so that's something I might want to look at a little closer. It actually looks very clean. It isn't, it's something that we've actually already dealt with. 
But you notice I can even, it's calm enough now, I can get a look at the eye, the eye looks very clear. I can rotate it over here and get a nice look at the eye on this fish too. So see, if you move with some fish, if you move very slowly, you can get a good look at it. Now some fish, if I just, the minute I touched it, it would get very excited and I couldn't really do anything unless I sedated it. So I have the fish in the toad here and I have the drug. This is the MS-222, weighed out for 80 milligrams per liter and then this is the equivalent amount of buffer, baking soda that we add. And remember, that's twice the amount of the MS-222. The other thing I want to point out is this is an air stone. Whenever we have the fish outside of the tank or in a separate tote, we want to have additional aeration in there. And so we've added that just to make sure there's plenty of oxygen in the tote. And now what I'm going to do is just mix the drug right in here. Just mix it up. And now what we do is we wait until the fish <clears throat> is ready to work on. So how do we tell? Well, what's going to happen is the fish is going to lose equilibrium. And once it loses equilibrium, <clears throat> it's, it's going to turn over on its side and upside down. Now when it starts to do that, the fish, that's a little uncomfortable for the fish. And the fish will get excited because it's feeling that it can't control its position in the water column. And we call that the excitatory phase. And that's a very important to remember that, that that will happen because we need to have a lid available because if the fish gets too excited, we want to be able to put the lid on and lock it down tight so the fish can't jump out. But what we're going to do is watch it because I want you to see what this looks like when a fish um, begins to lose equilibrium. Now the other important thing to remember is that many fish, I started with 80 parts per million or 80 milligrams per liter as my dose. Some fish, that won't get them to the level of sedation that we would like as quickly as we'd like. So what I typically do is I weigh out another 20 to be able to take it up to 100. Now, are you going to do that all the time with every fish? Not necessarily. Some fish will actually take a lower dose, and so you need to know your fish species. Um, some fish will take a higher dose. Some of the koi that I work with, it actually takes 120 parts per million to get them to the level of sedation where I can do an exam on them or to take a blood sample. So here you go, you can see right now, see the fish is losing equilibrium. But notice it's still breathing. We watch the gill movements. We want to still see regular breathing. And now you see how it's getting a little excited? Okay, this really isn't, um, this isn't too bad. Some fish will get so excited they'll jump out of the tote. And so that's why you want to have a lid or you see how I'm doing this in another tank. That way if it jumps out, it'll jump into the tank. Um, invariably, if, you, if it's going to jump out and you're outside of the tank, it's going to jump out and roll into the rose bushes or under the couch or something like that. And that's going to be a little awkward and it can damage the fish, obviously. So um, we want to always make sure the animal is protected. If anything goes wrong, you want to have covered as many bases as possible. So we'll just watch the fish here. And the way, what you can do is you can go in and you can test it and see if it can roll back over on its own. See how it stopped all that movement? So what this does now is this allows us to get a really nice look at the fish. See how it's still breathing very regularly. And we can get a good look at the fish. We can notice if there's any lesions or anything like that. We can look at all the fins. We can pull them up and look at them. Are there any erosions or parasites on the fins? Get a nice exam on them. Look at the eyes. We can even, we can even look in the mouth. We can open the mouth up and get a nice look into the mouth. See? We can also run our hands along the body of the fish and see if we feel anything unusual, any lumps or bumps that shouldn't be there. Do the same thing on the abdomen. And I'm not squeezing really hard, I'm just running my hands along the abdomen and just trying to see if I feel anything unusual. It, everything should feel symmetrical. Okay. And that's how any, any veterinarian would start an exam on a fish. The next thing we're going to do so I'm going to show you how to do a skin scrape. 
and then we're going to do a gill biopsy.